In this video, we will look at what a canard is and how that relates to windsurfing. I 3D printed and tested two different canard prototypes and will go into the success and failures of each. I was working on another fin with a rear adjustable flap when one of the old timer windsurfers called Decrepid called me out of the blue and started going on about canards on windsurf fins. He reckoned they increased the lift so much that he broke fins with them. I was intrigued, so I started researching and came up with two initial prototypes. So what exactly is a canard? A canard is a small wing in front of the main wing. The Wright Brothers flyer had them, as did many of the early planes. It was called a canard as these early planes supposedly looked like ducks. They became mainstream though with the Saab Vigan fighter plane. In simple terms, the canard increases the performance of the main wing at high angles of attack. For windsurfing, this means you can get upwind faster than a conventional fin. In theory, it also means you can run a smaller fin, which has less drag, and thus you can go faster. A fixed canard, like many from the glorying days of windsurfing, needs to be offset to the low pressure side of the main wing, which is difficult to implement for a windsurf fin. Many jet fighters use active canards, which their angle of attack is controlled by computers, which is too much for a windsurf application. Decrepit said the ones he made were free-floating canards, which means they follow the flow. Whilst he was trying to explain this to me, he said it's sort of like a foresail on a yacht, so the first prototype I came up with was based on around that idea. I also came up with another design closer to what Decrepit had done. It appeared the best approach was to modify a board, thanks Elmo, and have a modular system where we could insert different types of canards. The first version used 16 rare earth magnets to hold it in place, but this was sucked out of the bottom of the board almost immediately. This was replaced by a slanted design held in place by either the fin flange or a bolt. The foresail version used a sail of PET sheet with a sail flipper mech to eliminate seaweed catching. The free floating canard used a model boat rudder with an adjustable cam mechanism to limit the angle the canard could rotate. I also purchased a cheap, supposedly waterproof mini action cam for $25 which would fit inside the modules so we could watch what happened. This type of canard appeared to work well with no obvious sign of drag or speed penalty. Very brief testing showed it could head upwind about 4 degrees better than the same fin without the foresail. The following day had more wind so pushed this version hard till destruction. The fin lasted 40 kilometers before the PTG sheet sheared at the sail flip mechanism. The first run with the underwater action camera was with the normal fin to see how the air gap prism worked and how the same fin without the canard performed. I tried various prisms between the camera lens and the board bottom. Epoxy filled prism gave weird optical reflections and the least view. A water filled prism gives the least angle of refraction issues but is harder to make so I went with an air filled prism for this effort. Due to reflections and refraction, the airfield prism doesn't give much of a view. However, it started leaking and you can just start to get the view of the main fin. Future versions will need to have a water filled prism.
Just as I was about to launch, I noticed two issues with the rotating canard. First was I couldn't fit the fin without twisting the canard out of the way. Secondly, I shouldn't have been able to twist it out of the way, but could not find what the weak point was, so went ahead with the test. Almost immediately you can see the canard rotates the wrong way. The centre of lift is forward of the axis of rotation when it should be behind, so the action of the canard is exactly opposite what is wanted. The model boat rudder also spins against its stop and its preferred direction is perpendicular to the flow. Despite this you can see how much the canard bends the water. Waterproof micro action camera failed the moment I flipped the board. You can see water floating around the inside of the camera lens. Pretty sure there are pretty severe hydraulic forces from the board bouncing along the water that are transmitted to the camera. I might need to include a dampening sond or a vent to surface to stop future flooding. Back home I found the weakness in the model boat rudder was the steering horn rotated in relation to the shaft collar. So despite pinning the collar to the shaft, the canard could still rotate in relation to the steering horn. So next version needs to pin the horn to the collar as well as to the shaft. Since the canard spun the wrong way, I need to move the axis of rotation much further forward. When I push on the board with my feet, the tail of the canard should point towards me. The foresail version failed along the interface between the PETG sheet and the sail flipper, possibly due to being sliced by the edge and or having no radius on the sail flipper. The next version will eliminate those two potential failure points. That's all for this video, quite a few lessons learnt. Stand by for the next iteration. Thank you.